It's one o'clock on a Wednesday, and you know where you're at? You're at the Intero Now Show. We do this every Wednesday at one. We get great guests, great information, so you guys can take it in and take it back to your business. As always, my name is Derek Overby, VP of Marketing. I got the housekeeping. You know we never do the chat here in the Intero Now Show. We only do the Q&A. So if you have a cue, please give it, and we'll give you an A as soon as we can. And as always, joining me is our co-founder and CEO, Brian Crane. Take it away, Brian. Thank you very much, Derek. Welcome everybody to another Intero Now show. Uh, Derek is gonna advance to the next slide so I can do the quote. You know it. <laughs> Let me, uh, I got a lot of people on this call today. This is, uh, this is fun. I, I remembered <laughs> it today. Uh, so we've got a quote from Oops, our hang on second, hang on Johnson, second. who we'll get to in a minute. Uh, once Derek can share. Uh, <laughs> yep, it's just, uh, it's not letting me. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, uh, so Johnny is our guest today. Gonna be a great uh, interview here in a minute. Success is a process of many daily incremental action steps and not a destination. So. That's a great, uh, a great quote as we get close to October, which is generally a, uh, a, a month of planning for 2021. And after we've been through 2020, uh, there's gonna, it, planning for 2021 is gonna be an interesting process, but um, it's a great quote to, uh, to set us up for October. And uh, we'll get to Johnny in a minute. And in the meantime, I wanted to uh, bring um, Arnie von Massenhausen to the stage and um, he is going to introduce uh, one of his loan officers, one of his mortgage consultants, and uh, and Will Shea, Shea, who's got a great uh, testimonial. So Arnie, take the floor. Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Appreciate the uh, intro. Bottom line, we can uh, say all we want to say, but when someone offers up a testimonial on our behalf, we think that that speaks volumes and uh, appreciate Will Che volunteering this morning, uh, actually last week to speak to us this afternoon. And he had a great transaction with our mortgage consultant, Favi Perez. So we've got Will and Favi here. I love that picture. Thanks for doing that. Our Intero marketing department, I mean, let, let's give it up. This Intero now call, these marketing pieces, it's phenomenal. So. Uh, I'll turn it over to Will and Fabi. So uh, thank you for allowing us um, to share our success story with um, the company today. Uh, it was just an amazing experience. Uh, we've got these clients, um, you know, the Fabi basically took over the file for these guys and the way she did it was just, completely seamless. Uh, it was incredible. Within two hours, um, you know, she was already up to speed. Um, the great thing about, um, you know, working with prosperity, especially if you're working with uh, buyers that have brought their own um, lender to the party, they may be apprehensive about, um, you know, switching or, or even getting a second opinion. Um, you know, we've got clients that, you know, use, I'm not going to say their name. I'll just say it rhymes with Wiccan. And the great thing about that is you can say, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a much smoother ride for me negotiating on your behalf if I know the lender is going to be number one top notch and going to be responsive to any of your questions. And I kind of get a fun, you know, that, that rush when I will put a challenge to them. I'd say, hey, let's give your lender a call right now. I've got a question for them. And they go, okay, and they take out their phone and they call and what happens? Goes to a busy signal or they get in a loop uh, you know, with operators. I press a button and I call Favi, she's gonna pick up the phone and right off the top, that is absolutely going to make the clients go, hmm, yeah, this is a little different. Maybe we should at least give her um, a shot. And I gotta tell you, Faviola is incredible. Uh, the, the previous slide showed the clients that we closed in San Francisco. Um, you know, the, lend, the, the listing agent, uh, very, very 
detail oriented. He called Faviola, gave her, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sure he gave her a grilling about, you know, the clients and the terms and all that stuff. And, you know, clearly she was able to answer the questions, um, you know, that she could answer because I know, I know he wanted to dig super deep, but, you know, she gave him the confidence that we were, you know, ready and able uh, to move forward. So I just want to, again, I want to thank Faviola um, for all of her hard work and just all of Prosperity. Prosperity has been uh, phenomenal um, to me throughout the years. You know, we've got a nuclear market right now. And again, you know, I know that working with Faviola, I'm able to get my clients fully underwritten within a week, maybe two weeks. You know, that's one less contingency that you can actually use in, in you know, these times. Having Faviola speak directly with the, with the gatekeeper, the listing agent, um, is an amazing thing. And quite frankly, if you're a listing agent, you should, with the way the market has been on the finance side with COVID, you should have them call uh, your prosperity lender and you know have them look over the file and make sure what they are presenting you is a true picture. So again, thank you, Prosperity. Um, you know, you guys are amazing. It's just great using um, all of our ancillary services because it was San Francisco. We were able to bring in Orange Coast and Barbara Neal was amazing as always. And then we even got to get um, Old Republic uh, title, in, uh, not title, uh, Old Republic home warranty for them as well. So other, th other than the, the home services, uh, uh, the natural hazard disclosure, we pretty much went for a, a quadruple on this one. So again, much love to you guys and thank you very much. Hey, that was a great, uh, a great testimonial, Will. Really, really awesome. Uh, and we had uh, Fabiola on here a second ago. I don't see her on my screen, but Fabiola, you need to come back and, and at least say hello because we talked about how you are the, the angel of lending and uh, with, the, <laughs> with, the sun shining, um, with the sun shining over your shoulder there, and I, I, see, uh, I see the analogy to the angel of lending. So, so it, the floor is yours, Fabiola. Well, I just, uh, I just, I, uh, we enjoy working with, you know, great agents uh, like Will. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, they, they, they are a true partner with us in, in transactions. And I just wanted to, to thank Will as well for being a great partner and for supporting the in-house lending channel. Um, you know, for, for those of you that haven't tried and haven't given us a shot yet, um, reach out to us. We, were, we have seasoned uh, loan officers. We know what we're doing. Give us a shot. You, you won't. You won't be sorry you did. I love it. Um, great job, Fabiola. Thanks for all your work. And, and Will, thank you again for, for your testimonial. I absolutely love the, uh, the trifecta that you were able to bring to that uh, transaction. And what a, great, uh, what a great story. Thank you, Will. Appreciate it. Brian, can I just one more plug for next week? Starting next week, Thursday, we're going to be doing a deep, deep dive into contracts next Thursday. So um, we will send that information out to everyone. So hopefully you guys will be able to, to join us for that. We'll be doing it over uh, three Thursdays at one o'clock. We dive deep into it. Will you be using a computer and being able to do it via Zoom? We will be doing it via Zoom just like this. And I love questions. So have the questions. Fantastic. I love it. Thank you, Will. Great stuff. Fabiola, thank you very much. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Fabi. So I am uh, I am fired up to uh, to have uh, Johnny Johnson, who is uh, who is a number one draft pick for the Los Angeles Rams. And um, as a as a longtime real estate agent, I have to admit I, I haven't been a, a big huge NFL fan because I probably worked every Sunday for 15 years. But um, but Johnny, you've got a, an amazing track record uh, in uh, University of Texas, two time All American and then on to the Los Angeles Rams where your goal was to play basically more than anyone else in, in, in NFL. I mean, you, you went 10 years or, or was it 12 years um, in the NFL, which is an amazing feat. And so I'm, I'm really pleased uh, to have you on Johnny. And, and uh, you know, um, why don't you give us a, a brief introduction of yourself and then I have a few questions that hopefully we can tie to to kind of real estate sales success and that kind of thing. 
Brian, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Derek, thank you. Robert, thank you. You know, um, Brian, I'm, I consider myself to be very fortunate uh, for many reasons. Uh, one of them is for having the opportunity to, um, to grow up in a small town uh, in Texas, LaGrange, Texas, uh, raised by a single parent, um, graduated from high school on the welfare system. So, you know, all of those, those boxes that you would check um, about uh, a person being uh, at a disadvantage, um, I checked them all while I was growing up. I was fortunate enough to have uh, a wonderful mom who instilled strong values, beliefs uh, in all of her kids. Um, as my younger brother followed in my path and ended up playing for the New Orleans Saints uh, for a number of years. Uh, and so there was nothing better in the world than uh, at the time, the Saints and the Rams were in the same division, so we played each other twice. <laughs> um, so when, when I look back uh, on my life, uh, I have a lot of reasons to be thankful. And probably one of the single greatest ones uh, is the fact that I had a chance to play sports for as long as I did. And for 10 of those years uh, at the NFL level, and so the, the, the life lessons that I learned there that uh, I've been able to carry on to everyday life um, have been extremely valuable, particularly those revolving around obstacles or barriers. Uh, often when we set a goal and set out to achieve it, um, we run into all these obstacles or barriers. And so I've had to overcome a number of those. And, will continue as, as we all are in today's unprecedented times yes. of COVID-19, uh, overcoming those challenges. So yes. uh, it's those life lessons, Brian, that I appreciate. Yeah, well, Johnny, I've read your book and, and I, 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 uh, we're, gonna give, uh, we're gonna give some copies of your book away to, uh, to people that, uh, that, that are in the chat room asking questions and we'll get to some audience questions in a minute. But um, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm impressed by your book in several ways. I, I love how you, you give credit to so many people um, and first and foremost, your mom. And it uh, just kind of, it, it touches my heart to, to, uh, to hear you talk about your mom and, and what an instrumental guide she was to you in the early days. And then you, uh, you go on to talk about some, some great coaches and mentors and uh, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I can't wait to, to get into some of that with you today. Um, I, I, have a, I have a couple though, uh, I, I think I'd be remiss not to have a couple of sports questions for you right out of the gate. So, so um, you know, uh, one of the things I read about you is you, you, you either hold or held a record for the longest punt return or kickoff return. I can't remember which, but you ran it back like a hundred yards and uh, and I have a terrific fear of, you know, I have, I'd have nightmares of, you know, five guys, six feet four and over bearing down on me. And I, I got to catch a ball and then I got to make a decision to run left, right, backwards or forwards all in about a millisecond. And, and I, I just, I, that just freaks me out. Completely. And I, I'm, I, if you would talk just briefly about what that feels like and then. Sure business stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, well, first of all, I ran back punts uh, in high school and I ran them back in college. And um, I was on certain punt return teams uh, with the Rams. But the record that you're referring to is actually an interception return. And it was in my third NFL game. It was my first NFL record that I ran back 99 yards, which not only is a Rams record, it's an NFL record for the longest interception return by a rookie that early in their career that stands, both of those records still stand today. So nice. um, uh, obviously that was, that was special. As it relates to fielding that ball, uh, there's like a sixth sense when you look up and you see this ball, which seems like it's taken forever to get to you, and you know those guys are running at 
at their full speed and they have one goal, take your head off. That's their goal. Uh, uh, but there is no better feeling because most of the time uh, as a punt returner, um, when you catch it, if they're moving at that speed, oftentimes a subtle move can cause them to, to miss. Uh, and, but, and you just pray that you have within you the ability to, to, to create that subtle move at the right time. <laughs> okay, well, that, uh, that's, a great, uh, that's a great little uh, story around that. Um, I, I guess, you know, one of the things that, that's super, super relevant, and you mentioned uh, obstacles and overcoming obstacles and, and your mindset, um, Johnny, you know, you, you uh, grew up um, very poor. You, you mentioned you were, your family was, was on welfare and, and uh, your mother was a guiding light through that. But, um, you know, uh, how do you, how do you uh, just stay focused on, on getting through some of these obstacles? I mean, you know, it has to be a pretty tough time. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what was it that kind of got you to, I think, you know, in junior high school, it seems that, that you had an epiphany of sorts that you had some talent and your mother kept telling you, try to find that talent. And, and when you find it, uh, jump on it and run with it. And uh, I think that correlates to real estate. You know, I always, I try to talk to agents about finding what they're uniquely good at and then, and then trying to exploit that in their business. So um, tell us a little bit about your challenges and, and what, uh, what helped you kind of continue to forge through and break through those challenges? Well, it, it started when I was 13 years old. Um, uh, my parents had gotten a divorce and uh, I remember a conversation I had with my mom where I thought, uh, you know, basically life was over the way I had um, hoped it would be. And, and um, she encouraged me um, to think about um, why God had put me here. Um, she used the Bible often as a, as a playbook very interesting. And so like most smart aleck 13 year olds um, who was hurting and frustrated, you know, because of the divorce and things along those lines, I asked her what her vision and mission in life was because she was trying to tell me about that. And uh, Brian, she said with just an unlevel of confidence uh, and, and it was challenging times for us uh, at that period in our lives, um, she said, well, my mission is to raise you kids to be the very best that you can be. And my vision is to one day to own a brick home. And in the backyard of that brick home, uh, to have a clothesline hanging between two oak trees and to have my clothes drying during all seasons of the year. And I remember when she said that, thinking, okay, uh, when was the last time the United States government purchased one family a brick home with, because that's probably the only way we would ever get one. Uh, but nevertheless, because I was so miserable, I decided to give it some thought. And so from that conversation, I had this vision of one day playing in the National Football League. Now, no one from LaGrange had ever played really major college football, let on in the NFL. So... Um, so shortly after that, I discovered that I was a pretty good athlete. And then ultimately I became a heavily recruited out of, out of high school, uh, went to Texas, became an All-American, uh, and then became a number one draft pick. And um, signed the first multi-million dollar, multi-year contract the Rams ever had given a rookie at that time. And um, the first monies I took, uh, I bought my mom a home. And um, after the season, my rookie year, I remember walking through the home, just appreciating a lot of the finer things that we did not have growing up. And when I walked into the uh, dining room, I looked in the backyard, there was these two oak trees and hanging between the oak trees were a clothesline and the clothes were drying uh, in the middle of the wintertime, just like my mom had described as a part of a vision uh, 10 years prior to that. And I remember thinking, what was it back then that caused her 
to be so committed, to be so passionate, so confident in her vision despite the circumstances. And I determined that it was her purpose, her mission, and the clarity of her vision that were driving that. And, and those are the things that I took forward um, today. And it's like a GPS system. When you activate the GPS system, the satellites are going to help you navigate it regardless of what type of obstacles you run into. So I have found that to be quite instrumental in my life today and, and will always, always run into obstacles and that's going to be the case for all of us. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I, I absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's leveraging your unique gifts and adding those unique gifts to a, to a vision and a mission which those basically three things will will get you through most most of the most of the hurdles you're going to encounter they will and the purpose behind it there, there's always a higher purpose of why we pursue something and uh, if you think about it in real estate uh, uh, if you think about the needs and the goals of a consumer when they uh, particularly nowadays when they have to move or relocate uh, they didn't just wake up one day and decide that they're going to move or relocate. There is something that's driving that move. And the better you understand that move. In other words, uh, it's my belief, uh, something I learned from sports journalists when I was playing pro football. Um, it, it's called the five W's and H factor technique. That's what we use in our coaching. And the five W's stand for what, when, where, why, who, and then the H is how. So if you don't know those six things about uh, the consumer, how can you really help them? If you clearly understand those six things about them, uh, then you have a chance to deal with the obstacles and the barriers as they emerge. And that's something that both my mom and my football coaches instill into, uh, uh, into me uh, over the years. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's awesome. I, I love how you, like your mom guidance uh, aligned almost perfectly with what your coaches were, were also aligning on and, and then, and you were able to grab onto that. Um, and, and does that, does that fit right into this GPS system that you talk about your, your, uh, you know, getting the GPS set correctly? Brian, in, in our lives, probably one of the most significant things that we all uh, could do is take a step to activate our GPS system for everyday life. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if, if we were going to drive somewhere in our cars uh, today, um, you get in your car, one of the first things that we do if we don't know where we're going is we reach for the GPS system. And the first thing we do is we plug in uh, an address. Well, that's the destination. That's our desired destination. And then obviously the satellite images and everything provides the guidance to direct us to our desired location. Well, think about this for a moment. Uh, if you in life did not have a destination that was clearly identified, what basis would you use to make certain decisions? Uh, and if you, you make certain decisions, how do you know if they are the correct decisions? And um, with the clarity of, the, of the, the, the purpose, the vision, and the mission, and the activation of the GPS system, even when things are going wrong, and they are guaranteed to go wrong, that's what sports taught me, um, then you have a basis to make good, sound decisions on whether you're on track or not. And just because you're on track doesn't mean that the results are going to align immediately. Um, this is where your character traits, things like your patience, your persistence, uh, your resiliency skills uh, will need to be activated as well. But without the activation of the GPS system, uh, quite often those character traits uh, uh, may not be as strong as they would be uh, if you are operating with uh, the activation of that system. Yeah, that's um, that's fantastic. Uh, that's great stuff. The GPS for business, um, and that, that aligns perfectly with October kind of uh, coming up. And, and in Tarot, we usually start the planning process in October for the following year, and 
And so I'm sure that the GPS idea can, could come into play a big time as, as we think about what our plan looks like for 2021. Um, the other thing about not only planning, but practice, tell, tell me a little bit about your, maybe tell me about your practice routine. You, you were obviously a, a gifted athlete, but, um, but to stay in the NFL for 10 years, uh, when the average NFL player plays three years, I believe, uh, tell me, I, because that became part of your, you know, that was part of your GPS system, was to play longer than anybody, or at least I think you had a goal of 10 years to play. And, and so tell me about what your routine looked like in order to have that kind of longevity, especially playing as much as you did. Sure. Great question, Brian. The, um, what's interesting is you could, uh, when you think of how many football players there are uh, at all levels throughout the country, and, and that's something like 1.2 million football players. Uh, and they're only about 60, the same about the same number of real estate agents. It, it surely is, um, and there are only approximately sixteen hundred and ninety six NFL players today. So when you when you look at that number, uh, there are a lot of different factors that will go into whether um, a guy will even get a chance. Uh, but the ones who get a chance and have a chance to, uh, to make a difference and, and do so, they are the ones that have very unique practice habit patterns. They practice exactly the way they play. So uh, every single snap on the practice field is full speed with the utmost attention to detail. That's carried out in their meetings as well. And then as you carry forward, when you get into the game, it's almost like it's second nature. You never really have to think about it uh, because you're able to duplicate what you've practiced. And through that routine, no matter what level of success you experience, you always are going to have to duplicate that the next time you step uh, foot onto the practice field. And so, um, that is probably one of the most significant things that gave me an opportunity to play at the level that I played in high school and in college and to become a number one draft pick and an all pro in the NFL. Uh, I credit a lot of that to my practice habits. Yeah, just uh, just focused on on uh, and you know the mission and 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 then re repetitive practice at all out practice. And I, I find that interesting, 1,600 or so NFL players out of 1.2 million, um, generally boys, but, uh, but kids playing, playing football, um, that is just uh, long odds of, of, of getting there. And, uh, and it, it kind of, uh, it's just interesting, you know, at the highest level, there's still a tremendous amount of practice. And, and you said something else there, attention to detail. And, and I think that that attention to detail is something we can draw a line to in real estate. Um, and, and uh, you know, just making sure that you're practicing, you're, you're working on things and you're, and you're focused on, on the details of your presentation, your delivery, um, even, even as you suggested the W's and the H, uh, the, those, those questions that you're asking the client, make sure you understand the client. I mean, I, I think that, Deserves a, a, a one more real quick visit. Um, can you, uh, the, the, I think it was the five W's and the H. Um, I, I'd like all the real estate agents on the call to, to kind of listen to that because I think in order to provide a phenomenal experience for the client, we, we need to know the answers to those questions. Can you just rattle those off for me one more time? Sure. And Brian, I'm going to even add. Oh. oh, we lost him. Derek. Uh, yep. Let me let me see what happened to him. That's a bummer. I don't know. He's still there. Well, hang on a second. Hang on. He's still there. <laughs> okay. I don't know what happened to him. He's been having pro. He had a problem when we got on this morning too. Johnny's back. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. We don't know what happened. 
Hey, hey we, we lost you. You're on mute still, Johnny. Oh. Johnny, you're here. Just got to unmute and just unmute yourself, Johnny. Johnny, just unmute yourself. Nope. I don't think he thinks. I think he thought he'd lost his internet. Johnny, we're still here. Just unmute yourself. There you go. Yep. Okay. So, sorry about that. So, Brian, one of the things that's unique, um, in my opinion, is that, uh, and I often use an analogy of a doctor. Um, so as an athlete, we take annual physicals every year. Um, and when, every time we go in for the physical, um, the doctor puts you through certain tests. And I don't care how well he knows you, he or she is going to ask you certain questions, even the most detailed questions to make sure they give you a thorough examination so they understand how the best provide the service that they need to provide. And when you look at real estate, because we live in such a complex world, if a person says I'm interested in purchasing or selling, that's only maybe one or 2% of what's necessary to provide them with the level of quality service that needs to be provided to create a lifelong relationship with that particular customer. And so the better you understand the what, the when, the where, the why, the who, and the how about that customer, the better you're going to be able to serve them. And just because you ask one what, when, or why question doesn't mean that there's another two, three, four, five, six what, when, why, how type questions that may need to be asked or answered. And, and that is so critical, in my opinion, to not only better understanding the, uh, the consumer, but provide them really exceptional service. And so the less uh, they know about me and the more I know about them, uh, if I'm a real estate professional, the, the, the higher quality of service that you're going to provide them. Yeah, that is uh, tremendous. I want to uh, remind everybody or tell everybody in the audience that you, you, you either you are or have been a real estate agent after your college, after your football career, you went on to, uh, to be involved in real estate. So you're, you're speaking uh, from a, a, a mindset of, of knowledge and, and full understanding of what we all do. Um, I, I'd like you to maybe talk a little bit about that, but also tell us a little bit about uh, your, your passion for uh, world, world-class coaches and maybe what uh, inspired you to start your own, your own company. Sure. Uh, and thank we'll, you. And th then we're going to open this up to a Q&A. And Derek, I'll, I'll let you uh, fire those Q&As. Okay. Thank you. Brian, uh, Brian, thank you for that. So in my seventh year of my NFL career, I had a vision. Uh, and it was a vision of the coaching process that we use as world-class athletes uh, against the world's greatest competition in the most hostile environment, uh, being available to all sectors of society. I shared that vision with my life coach, and my life coach asked me a life-changing question, and he made a life-changing suggestion. The question that he asked me was how large did I want my playing field to be? Did I want it to be right here in Los Angeles? Or did I want it to be something larger? I told him I didn't know. He told me to think about it. Six months later, I came back and I said, okay, I've got it. Uh, that plan field, that plan field is the world. And from that vision, world-class coaches was born. So the life-changing suggestion that he made is he said, okay, you've been playing football all your life. I encourage you to find another profession 
to gain some business experience in outside of football. And I chose real estate sales as that profession. Didn't know anything about it. Um, and then I set a goal. I had three years left on my NFL contract. I set a goal that by the time I retired from the NFL, I want to be in a position to where um, I would close a minimum of 100 transactions a year uh, during my real estate career because the business experience that I was gaining in real estate was actually designed to assist me in preparing for my coaching practice. So I spent nine years selling real estate as a residential agent. So when I speak uh, about some of the things that I'm speaking about, like the five W's and H factor, I'm speaking from fir firsthand experience. And that was probably, um, that experience has been just extremely valuable as it relates to preparing me in my, in my coaching practice. Nice, that's fantastic. And by the way, I did hit that goal. I did hit that goal. I, I am sure you did. Um, and I can, I can see why you and Gino Lafari are good friends because uh, Gino's ambition was to uh, run the largest real estate company in the world. And I'm pretty sure he's achieved that at, at this point in, and uh, with Home Services of America. So I, uh, I, I can totally appreciate why you and Gino get along so well. Well, Gino and I go way back, in fact, um, he serves as one of my mentors, coaches, and he's obviously one of my best friends. I serve as one of his mentors and coaches. And, you know, we have a standard Saturday morning, uh, used to be breakfast prior to the pandemic. Now we do it by phone. We're looking forward to being able to reconnect um, uh, here as soon as things open back up in person. But those meetings that I have with him, uh, I'm very fortunate, uh, first of all, to have someone uh, like a Gino. And by the way, uh, uh, I often tell him we have something in common. Uh, he played defensive back in high school. I played defensive back. He's in his <laughs> high school hall of fame uh, in, in, uh, uh, in high school, uh, but he's in the hall of fame of real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, we have a, we have a couple more minutes uh, for some Q&A uh, from our chat box here. And uh, I'm going to let Derek fire through that. And uh, we'll, we'll, keep you, we'll keep you on for another few minutes if it's okay, Johnny. Sure. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Hey, Johnny, we got a good question here from Jen Holes. At Intero, we push a healthy competition between agents. What were the holidays like for you and your brother? Did you push each other? Did you call each other after wins and losses to take it out? Great question, and um, it, 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 yes, uh, we 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 were best friends. We were best friends, and for three hours during the game time, we were pure enemies. I mean, just flat out enemies. Uh, and if we played in New Orleans, that meant their fans were going to boo me. If they we played in. In LA, that meant our fans were going to boo him. And so uh, other than that three hour period, we were best friends, but within that three hour period, uh, we were two of the most competitive people you will ever encounter in a life, although in life, although we were brothers. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Uh, next question comes in from Rebecca White. Um, she's asking, you know, I was blessed to have a best mother ever. I know I learned a lot from her. What would you say the best lesson that you learned from your mother? Great question. Um, Rebecca, I would say um, it was, when you think of the GPS system, it was activating the GPS system, but it was when you run into an ost obstacle or barrier, it was how to overcome them, how to stay persistent, how to stay uh, so it was the character traits of, of persistence, uh, of resiliency, and things along those lines. But what she really taught, in order to achieve your goal, there are four things that needs to be aligned. Your beliefs, your habits, your attitudes, and your, your, uh, your beliefs, habits, attitudes, and your expectations all have to be aligned. And my mom, despite the circumstances, 
taught me that both through her actions, what I saw and what she communicated, not just what she communicated, but what I saw in her as well. And so I would say, if you can align those things, um, that's what, uh, that, those are one of the key things that I took away from my mom. Uh, Desiree Stanley has a great question. Was it buying that home for your mother that helped you realize that you might want to get into the real estate uh, wor world later? Uh, actually, no. Um, it uh, Until my life coach asked the question, um, they were not, uh, they, they did not correlate. Uh, it wasn't until later on I got into real estate um, and I really realized uh, what what drove me to purchasing that home. Uh, it was my mom's mission. And by the way, the clothesline, because I always thought, what was this clothesline in the backyard of a brick home? <laughs> What's really driving that? And so I asked her about that at one time. And, uh, and what led me to ask her is I had bought, I, can, I had furnished a home and she had a brand new uh, washer in dryer, which we never had when I was growing up. And I asked her, mom, do you ever use the washer and dryer? And she said, yes, I do. But sometimes, baby, I just like that seat, that sweet smell of my clothes drying <laughs> on the clothesline during all seasons of the year. And <laughs> what that said to me is it, 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 it wasn't a brick home she was looking for. It was the peace that she was looking for. And you know, when you look at the title of my book, um, Brian, that you referred to earlier, the title of it is, You're Closer Than You Think, Whether You Realize It or Not. And my mom taught me that no matter what the circumstances are, you are closer than you think, whether you realize it or not, if you take certain steps. And she not only lived by those, she had the ability to instill those steps uh, into us kids, and they applied not only uh, for football, they applied for real estate, and they applied for coaching as well, uh, and they do so in the face of the obstacles or barriers that we that we that we run into. Yeah, that's that's fantastic, Derek. I think we have time for one more question from the audience. Yeah. Okay, I got a great one from Tina here. Uh, how do you correct your GPS without being in in too much of a drift in your business? Okay, it's a great question. So uh, it's mindset. So listen to this quote. If your activities are properly aligned, if they are properly aligned with your destination, your outcome is assured. So if your activities are properly aligned, so if you, you activate the GPS system, you have to be aware, and this is what I talk about in that book as well, you know, which, which, which my mom taught me. Uh, you know, we set big goals. And when we set out to accomplish them, we're going to run into these obstacles or barriers. Um, today, when you look at the pandemic, when you look at the social unrest, when you look at this being an election year, uh, you look at high un unemployment. Uh, these are major ones that, that, that not count the ones that we that we normally run in, into. So, to properly align your activities with your desired results, and then have the ability to stay focused on them, despite certain circumstances, is going to give you a chance to be successful every single time. Now, it may not be in the time frame that you had originally. Uh, maybe had hope for, but if you stay focused on it and consistent with it, ultimately, if those activities are aligned, you're gonna give yourself a chance to be successful, whether it's planning the NFL, plan for 10 years, producing 100 transactions, or uh, whatever the goals are that's activated your GPS system. Yeah, I, that is fantastic. I. I think this is uh, one of the best shows we've had. Uh, certainly, Johnny, you've been uh, tremendous, and the engagement uh, is just I, just off the charts. Um, thank you so much for, for joining our show, Johnny. Uh, you've been a, a true gift to our, to our team here at Intero. I appreciate you, and, uh, and great, uh, great wisdom you've just imparted on us. Thank you so much. 
Brian, thank you very much. And I'd like to leave your audience with the fact that uh, if you're closer than you think, whether you realize it or not, and you properly align those activities, you're going to put yourself in a position uh, to give yourself a chance uh, to be successful. And that's really at the core of the mindset of every professional player across all sports. Um, and so, um, Brian, if you don't mind, I encourage uh, people, if you haven't already done so, to pick up a copy of... Uh, uh, my book, You're Closer Than You Think, whether you realize it or not. A lot of the details that we're, that we're talking about, you can find there. And Brian, I want to thank you for uh, all the ones that you provide in the book too as well. I greatly appreciate that. Yeah, you bet, uh, Johnny. I, I want to, uh, I'll give a, a quick shout out to Priscilla too, because I know she worked with you to, to uh, get you ready and all that. So um, our marketing team, it was mentioned by Arnie earlier, Derek and Priscilla and the entire marketing team have been crushing the last uh, six, seven months of this uh, crazy world we're in. And, and I know they've been doubling down on their efforts. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's just a great thing to witness the teamwork and the seamless execution. So thank you so much to marketing. Johnny, thank you very much. And we'll uh, hopefully catch up to you soon. Thanks, Brian. Um, Derek, um, Robert, uh, all you guys, thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Johnny. Hey, Robert, I hear you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Hook 'em horns. Hook 'em, baby. <laughs> okay. Well, that was uh, that was fantastic. I'm gonna move quickly to Andrew Devlin, who has a testimonial uh, going on from some video work that he's been doing, and and uh, I saw him teeing up earlier. So hopefully they can uh, get to that, and then we'll finish it out with uh, our guru in in market analytics, Robert Cruz. So Andrew, you're up. Let's do. Let's go. There he is. How's it going, guys? Hey, it's going great. So uh, Scott Chase here with me to help me with the testimonial. We're actually, um, where are we, Scott? We're at uh, the Los Altos Main Street office in uh, a production studio. All right. Wonderful. So, yeah, we've got, um, we've been doing videos all day today. We've probably shot about, we have shot seven vi videos, market update videos, snapshot videos with folks from, uh, all around the Bay Area have come in and did and videos. Yeah, I mean, we, we've done market updates. We've done it's unique Intero capability videos. And, you know, candidly today, videos are a great way to be seen, get your message out on social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and, and we're doing it. It's not, a, it's not a nice to do, it's a must do. And we had seven agents today and we got through seven agents in, in just under two hours and uh, real effective, really easy and uh, reach out. Let's uh, make some videos. Hey, hey, Scott, I got a quick question for you. You know, you've been doing these videos for a couple of weeks now and I've happened to see your, uh, your engagement on, especially on LinkedIn. Can you just talk about that, what, you, what you've seen and the kind of interaction that you're getting? So it's been amazing. Uh, I, I have had uh, close to 2,000 views on, on both of the videos. I've had people call, um, reach out, a agents from uh, other brokerages, agents within Tiro. I, I was just overwhelmed with the, uh, how many views it was getting and how well it was receptive. Awesome. So that's, uh, that's awesome. And Andrew, you've got a special going right now f to help agents kind of do their first one. Uh, tell us briefly about that. Yeah, so we've been doing these market shot, snapshot videos um, and we've been helping agents do that for $60, just kind of get them, get their feet wet with video. So we actually provide the scripts for the agents, uh, especially with the market statistics and give them suggestions on how to do their intro and outro but it's probably the easiest video to do. So the market snapshot video you get to um, select the market that you want to um, that you want to cover. So say Santa Clara County, and uh, we will give you the script. All you have to do is, you know, do an intro, read through the statistics and do an outro, and then we'll put everything together and make it look super professional. And so it's a really good video to get engagement, get out into your audience. And it's a uh, it's pretty good price for 60 bucks. It's, it's fantastic. I, um, I've been using Andrew now for several months and, and Derek can attest to that, uh, that, that uh, Andrew's technology to make it easy is real. And uh, 
because Derek tried to, to help me with video early on and, and it was a bit of a struggle. Um, as I've mentioned, I don't want those, uh, whatever you call them, the outtakes, the ones that don't work. Uh, <laughs> I don't want those to go public because everybody will have a whole different opinion of me. Uh, we're, making a, we're making a gag reel now, Brian. It's, it's all good. <laughs> That'll be a private one. <laughs> yes. In any case, Andrew, uh, thank you very much. Scott, thanks for jumping on and, and sharing what you're doing and, and, and the effectiveness of it. Thank you. Got it. On. Take care. Thanks, guys. Okay. Appreciate it very much. All right. We're on with Robert Cruz, our, our Intero's uh, market analytics guru. Robert, we haven't seen you in a few weeks. Glad to see you. Uh, you're about to share a screen. Uh, let's uh, let's roll. Awesome, thank you, Brian. Uh, not on mute, cool. So uh, great, great. I can't I can't say enough about Johnny Johnson. Uh, I grew up uh, 30 minutes away from the University of Texas, so I was a big fan. And one of my earliest memories is watching him win the Red River rival Red River rivalry against Oklahoma with a goal. So that was. Uh, Really cool for me in a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, really appreciated what he had to say, all things for all of us. And I want to focus today uh, on what we're going to get ready for in this fall and winter. And uh, I think it's going to be a very active fall and winter. And going with what Johnny said, um, I'm not saying overall market's going to be busier, but those agents who have the right mindset and, and see the opportunity and understand the challenges, but get past them are going to do really, really well in the next six months. And I'm going to share um, something that I have always tried to focus on when I was training agents in the past, and it still holds true. And that's the simple line that you prospect on the headlines and you close on the facts. And what that means right now is, We've covered this a little bit in the past, but I think it's really going to hit you hard and more importantly going to hit your clients and potential clients hard is this idea of buyers and sellers changing and everyone leaving the cities and everyone leaving California. And um, those headlines are going to be everywhere. Uh, all buyers and sellers are going to hear them. All realtors are going to hear them. And I think there will be a lot of overreaction. So, uh, those are still good headlines to use to get in front of a buyer or seller because there is some truth to them. But I'm going to show you what I think is going to be really exciting for a lot of us. Oops. Draws and eyeballs, right? New York and California are the land of the flea and Texas is the land of the free, right? Uh, of course, a person that specializes in selling properties in Texas uh, wrote this headline. Uh, so they're obviously incented with uh, getting people to read it and see it and contact him to buy a house in Texas. Um, but it's important. It is happening. It was happening before coronavirus. It will continue to happen after the coronavirus. Uh, but I don't want us as practitioners to stay here in Silicon Valley to overreact to this idea and what is actually going on. Let me share this, right? Uh, that shift to suburban and living was happening and the pandemic has sped it up. Rents are rising and inventory is dwindling in small towns because people are soaking them up. And for us here in the Silicon Valley, we see that here, the absorption rate. We can see clearly that uh, we've had three different periods here, right? Um, last year through the end of the year, we had buyers really interested in the peninsula in San Mateo County, followed by Santa Clara and San Benito Trail. Uh, from the start of the year through the lockdown, everything changed, right? And Santa Clara shot up in interest for the buyers and, and San Mateo dropped and San Benito trailed. Since the lockdown was kind of lifted and we were, we were back in the market and busy, you can see San Benito just shooting straight up, right? And San Mateo uh, trailing badly now. So a complete reversal of just 12, 15 months ago in terms of what are buyers looking at? Where are they interested in going to? And this is the headline you see. These are the, everyone's leaving the city for 
wide open spaces. But here's what I mean by don't get caught up in that headline. Let's follow it up with, all right, where are the sales? And you see same period, same three counties, and you see the sales are always in Santa Clara County. Uh, far more inventory, far more buyers and sellers. And so every change is, uh, that affects our markets is more pronounced in Santa Clara County. And you see San Benito, if you take that, this 30,000 foot view, there's been no change, right? It's just plugging along there at the bottom. And I love San Benito and I love all our San agents. This is not knocking anybody. This is just, again, that idea, prospect on the headlines, close on the facts. Where are the deals? They're always going to be here. Hey, Robert. Yes. Yeah, that's, I love this chart. I love the previous one. Can you go back one notch? I just have one thing to point out for, to, to, uh, around your concept of optimism. And it's that last sentence there um, in, in the graph. 33% or higher on the graph indicates a seller's market. And you've marked out 33% on the blue line. Every single market, Every market. Is, is in a seller market zone. So that's something that uh, is huge and really apparent here. So I appreciate you pointing it out. Yeah, thanks for catching that. I, I wanted to put that out in purpose just to, again, where you are is a great place to be and it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. These are the units and movement there. Uh, this is uh, new listings. Where's the opportunity? Again, always in Santa Clara. San Mateo is strong and, and San Benito, God bless it, is doing really, really well. Uh, but you can see the trends over time. You buyers see the of the peninsula more than Santa Clara County followed by San Benito, if you believe the headlines. If you just follow the headlines, here's again the facts. Median price is up year over year in all three counties, but San Mateo is up 60% year over year, Santa Clara up 13% and San Benito only up 1% year over year. All right, so understand this will get you in front of a lot of people with a fact need to make really strong decisions. The headlines are there, they read them. The buyers and sellers are thinking about that. And that's may, that may be where their mindset is when you first talk to them. But then when you hit them with these facts and really, really understand, um, you're going to get the deal over your competitor because they only know the headlines. They don't know these facts. Uh, and think, I want to I want to finish with this. I've been sharing this with a lot of you, and especially our Cupertino agents that see this every week. Uh, inventory wrong, is still up year over year along the 101 corridor where it's down everywhere. This is kind of the Santa Clara, Silicon Valley version of this, everybody's fleeing the more dense areas. Uh, but watch this, look at the pendings. Everywhere, including those zones. And that I'm telling you, yes, I think there are sellers that are saying, it's time to get out, it's time to move. You can identify and isolate the places where that is up year over year, that is not Pretending dropping prices. Click back, Sunnyvale's way up in listings year over year, down everywhere else. But look at the pendings. Not a weak spot in it. Yes, once you hit Santa Teresa and down to Morgan Hill, all the way through Hollister, that pending number is triple digits or higher, but there's nothing to buy, right? So um, Understand what's going out there. Go out and explain it to these homeowners and prospective homeowners of the strength of the Silicon Valley market, the opportunity that is out there. And, and just listen to what Johnny Johnson said. You're closer than you think. If you want to have your best fourth quarter ever, you're closer than you think. The market conditions are there for you to achieve it as long as you understand your job to go out there and talk to as many buyers and sellers as you can. Leverage our partners to get the best Possible, and then understand these numbers so you can explain these difficult concepts to your buyer and seller and get in a contract and give them fantastic service. So that's all I have, Brian, but uh, just excited about this fourth quarter coming up and what we have in front of us. Home run. Thank you very much, Robert. Great, great stuff. I, uh, I am unmuted. Okay. Um, <laughs> I thought maybe I was still muted. Thank you. <laughs> for uh, for everything. Uh, that was a great uh, little quick analysis of what's going on. Super, super informative. And, and I hope everybody appreciates the value of, of being able to take a take that information in the marketplace and make more transactions happen. Um, Derek, thank you and your team for a great show today. 
and uh, Arnie and uh, Fabiola, great job with uh, with PHM and uh, Will Che. Thank you for your testimonial, uh, Johnny Johnson. Uh, I, I guess I what do you say? You say touchdown. That was uh, that was incredible. Um, thank you your presentation. Uh, Andrew, over at Pitch Hub, you crushed it. Scott Chase, thanks for bringing Andrew on the show. And um, last but not least, we had Robert. So Robert, thank you. Great show today, everybody. Thanks for being on it. Let's crush fourth quarter. Let's, let's get going right now. Thank you. Make it a great week. Oh, you play. <laughs> we were trying to compete with the music. I always, uh, I always have my music handy. I've got. Yeah, I was just, I was just, I was on another on. screen. I was trying to get my music back up. Uh, well, I got the speaker going here. No problem. I don't know who this is. Like, no idea. But... It's a random. Anyway, good show, Derek. Thank you. Waiting for it, though. All right, we're out of here. Have a good one, everyone.